Hi everyone, Stephen Van Tassel here. I'm the vertebrate pest specialist for the Montana Department of Agriculture. Uh, I am not the person going to be teaching this course for you here, but you're part of the initial core training and we're really glad to have you on board here. I just wanted to spend a few moments to give you some tips on how to make the training you're receiving here the most effective so that we can get the desired result for you. That is, we want you to pass. So let me kind of put a little bit of your concern at ease. The people who have taken the class previously, uh, not in this format, grind you up in person, uh, we had well over a 90% pass rate. So this prep course has a good reputation of getting people ready to take the test. However, we are now in a more distance environment here. So we want to give you some strategies and some principles to help you make the most of your time to get that desired result, namely to pass your pesticide exam so you can get out and perform the duties that you've been hired to do. So let me go through some strategies that you can use and implement to help improve your chances of having the successful result that you're looking for. The first one I want you to be thinking of, and that is to first focus on your training. What I mean by that is find a place in a time where you can watch the videos and perform your homework and to do the quizzes and as well as to read the manual that you have complete focus so that you want to get rid of those distractions like this cell phone, I got to put it in front. Here we go. So like, a, like your cell phone, right? You have to be sure that that's sort of turned off and you have to, children and friends need to know that this is going to be your your time to study and try to turn off any alarm bells you might have on your computer as well so take the moment focus your energy because we you need to, there's a lot of new material that's going to be here it's nothing excessively complicated but there's a lot of acronyms in in terms that you're not going to be familiar with that you're going to need to sort of be become familiar with to get the most out of this particular training. The second principle we'd like you to have is that is read all the study materials. Don't skip anything. If you if we want you to read the manual, read that test book manual. Read all the materials that we have because you want to immerse yourself in the training that's be provided. Third, take notes during your lectures. So you're gonna see some presentations online, whether it be live in a webinar situation or recorded where you're doing it asynchronously. We have the PowerPoints already printed out in a presentation format. So there's notes, notes that you can take next to each one of the PowerPoint slides. The research shows that when you study with a pen and take some notes, it actually helps embed the information into your mind because you're using some kinesthetic uh, neurological work as well in stimulating more elements of your mind. So saturate yourself with this information. If you have an idea or a question, write it down. Don't think you're like, well, I'm gonna miss something else because you only have to get an 80 to pass. So you don't have to know all the answers to every particular question. You just have to get to that 80%. So it's better for you to have 80% locked in than to have a weak understanding of 100%. Okay, I hope that kind of makes sense for you. Fourth, we want you to read with a pencil. So I have a pencil here. This is what I use my little, uh, I have a, a lead holder, read with a pencil or read with a pen. What do we mean by that? As you're reading in your manual, take notes in the margin. Identify key concepts and things. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Maybe, maybe something's confusing where you can put a question mark next to it. Maybe there's something where you're able to summarize that particular section in just a few words that will help you remember it in the future. Underlining helps some people, but it can be a distraction at times. You have to decide how that's going to work for you. Some people use a highlighter. Again, that can be a distraction for some people. It may not be for you. Try to, but if you're writing out in your own words a summary or a concept where maybe you're outlining some key points that are spread over several paragraphs, that is a powerful tool to help you understand the material that's in front of you and be able to memorize that in a deeper way without necessarily having to have, you know, cards where you're doing memorization. All right. Fifth, 
do all the assignments and quizzes. I mean, that's sort of repetitive what I said earlier in terms of reading everything or going through all of the presentations with a pen in your hand. Make sure you do everything. Don't skip because the repetition is the mother of learning. And so lectures and readings are there to reinforce one another so that you're getting the same material in a different way. Now understand the presentations that are given do not cover everything. They're trying to hammer home some of the major points to make sure you don't miss those points. So if you do everything that's assigned, you're going to have enough overlap of material to make sure you stand a really good chance of having good exposure to what we're looking for for you to know out of this particular training. We want you to know all of it, but we understand that's a lot to take in. And so we're using this prep class as sort of a reinforcement technique so you can get this material and get past that exam so you can get out and do the work that you need to do. Number six, ask questions. So if something is puzzling you and you've tried to work through it, maybe you've listened to the lectures and you're doing the reading and you've mulled it over a few times and something's still not clicking for you, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We have a available by email. So just because you're studying alone and learning alone doesn't mean that you are alone. We're here to back you up. We want this training to be successful so that you're properly prepared for this exam to the best extent possible. We want to do our part. We're just asking you to do your part. And then lastly, what there's a lot of content you're going to be exposed to. What do you really need to hammer home on? I'm going to just simply recommend a couple of tips here. Number one, em embrace the vocabulary. There are a lot of acronyms in this particular industry. Think of it as a new language. Every industry has its own key terms. The, not the same is true for using pesticides, you know, EPA and FIFRA and PPE. These are all types of acronyms that you're going to need to know. So, Make sure you spend some time, make sure you get those. And you're going to see some of those acronyms over and over and over again. So you're going to have plenty of opportunity to get a grasp of them. Focus on key principles and concepts. You know, things like being safe around pesticides. If something seems like it's going to be exposing you to pesticides, that's probably not the right answer, right? We don't want you to be exposed to pesticides. We want you to minimize your exposure to pesticides. So that would be a key principle. And sometimes these principles are helpful because this is going to be a multiple choice exam. So you're going to be able to probably eliminate one or maybe two of the answers right off the bat. And so if two answers you know are wrong, well, then the next two answers, if there's two, I think we only have three per, per, for, for each one of our questions here. But if you get rid of two, there's only one left. And if there's four answers, well, then only two are left. So you have a 50-50 shot and chances are you probably can work your way through. Lastly, do all the quizzes. If there's an exercise inside of your manual, perform, do the exercise, try to answer the questions. Why is this? You would say, Steve, and this seems really repetitive. Many of you have not had to take care of do any exams for several years. Some of us, even longer than that. Test anxiety is an important problem to confront. And so the quizzes that we're offering is going to help you understand a the mechanics of taking the exam, as well as helping you deal with the stress that many people have. They might know the answer, but they're overthinking it. And that type of a stress can be a challenge for them. So it is something that you kind of need to do to make sure that you are practicing and getting some of that stress so that way when the real test comes it's like all right nothing new here same thing different day and so we want you to be sure you have that so same way with the answering the longer questions inside the manual if there are questions there writing out those answers will help you process in deep more think more deeply about the material that you're getting that's basically it we want you to have success we want to be part of your success. We're really glad that you're taking this particular training. Don't be afraid to reach out if something is awry and you need some assistance for something. We want you to be successful and use pesticides safely and effectively for the type of work you're doing. Glad to have you on board. Take care.